having kids and having a business are two babies, right? And two different babies that both need time. Life doesn't just stop when you run a company, but there are only so many hours in a day. How do you balance having a business and a family without feeling as though you're failing at both? So anyone who tells me, you know, uh, it's quality versus quantity, I think I don't buy that at all. Both need a lot of time. Welcome to Grit and Growth from Stanford Seed, the show where Africa and South Asia's intrepid entrepreneurs share their trials and triumphs. Happy New Year, and welcome back to Grit and Growth. As we are busy preparing for season four, we want to bring you some short conversations we've had with incredible entrepreneurs over the past year. Even though the next few episodes are small, we're still tackling big issues with fascinating people. People like Sakshi Kapahi. Hi, my name is Sakshi Kapahi. I'm from India. I know Sakshi from her time in the Seed Transformation Program, where she was somewhat of a celebrity. I'm very famous because I I was pregnant when I applied with my second son. And my baby was three months old when I left for the first immersion week. And I carried four bags with me to the immersion week. So someone walked up to me and said, you must be the most academic person here. You carry all these bags. And I said, no, this is my breast pump. This is the ice bag. But while Sakshi was growing her family, she was also growing her business. I had a company called Omam Consultants, and we're in the business of HR consulting. We're a 39-year-old company, and we do HR advisory and leadership search. So we provide senior-level leadership assessment advisory, and we help firms with their organizational structure, design, compensation structures. We work with a lot of large corporates, and we help international companies enter the India market. So in the 80s, they opened up the Indian economy to encourage local manufacturing and uh, bring in technologies. But every company that came in had to be a joint venture. So when that was happening and uh, all of these private enterprises were being set up, there was a need for leadership talent. So people needed to go and understand how to find talent, uh, how to recruit people, assess them technically. So this is in the 1980s and my father had set up the company. Actually, even though dad was an entrepreneur, he never talked about it. You sort of grew up in a country where academics, at least back then, even today, but then even more so, were very, very important. So there was a lot of pressure to do well academically. And everyone sort of dreamed of a big corporate job. So success was measured more in terms of going to a big college or a very reputed college and then getting a reputed job in a large corporate. I'm an MBA uh, from MIT. I worked in Deutsche Bank in banking as a structured trader. And then I decided that I'd done enough of the large corporate and I wanted to move back and be part of the India growth story. And here was a business that my father had set up which had about 80 employees. We were based out of four cities and we were working with most of the large corporates. So the idea was to see that with this platform and the entrepreneurial bug, where can I take it? How do I grow it to the next level? Sakshi had been around Omam Consultants for most of her life, and her credentials were impeccable. But even so, entering the business proved challenging. When I moved back to India and joined the business, the reception of everyone around, the managers, the senior leadership, was very lukewarm. You know, one side, they'd all seen me grow up, so that was a little complicated. There was definitely love and respect, but it didn't necessarily translate into acceptance into the company. There was also a lot of concern for the senior leadership saying, we've been doing this for far longer. How is this going to work? And I'd never worked in India. So my entire work experience of 10 years had been overseas. So it was also a big learning curve. So it took a while. And uh, when I joined the business, my father gave me a particular vertical. And I was put on the same uh, metrics as all the other business heads. So I had to prove myself as a business head before more responsibility was given to me. As a woman, Sakshi had additional hurdles to clear. The struggles that women face to come to work itself are huge. And then the acceptability at the workplace is still very industry specific. 
I mean, you'll always get these questions, right? Oh, you must be working for your husband. Oh, you must be. I was making my Bombay office and in a large building and someone kept asking me, oh, you must be building this for your father or your husband. They assume there has to be a male member that will come through later. That, you know, you're just here to add the curtains and the carpets. I mean, how could you be running the business? So you do get that even today quite a bit. It has reduced tremendously, but to not expect it would be naive. It's these very attitudes that explain why only 14% of entrepreneurs in India are women. But Sakshi's biggest obstacle is one that working mothers face all over the world. Having kids and having a business are two babies, right? And two different babies that both need time. So anyone who tells me, you know, it's quality versus quantity, I think I don't buy that at all. Both need a lot of time. Both my kids are very young. I have a seven and a three-year-old. And they want time. They don't understand what is quality versus quantity. They don't want to know when I'll be home. Can I give them a bath? Can I tuck them in? And at the same time, the business needs you, right? Every aspect till you get post-heroic. It needs you there. That's also your baby. And there's no right balance. So it's important to have different people supporting you. I have a great support. And I'm also very blessed that I have such an amazing support system. My parents are very supportive, my husband's very supportive, and my in-laws are very supportive. So my mother-in-law used to run a business. So she's probably my biggest support. A strong family support system was essential for Sakshi, but professional support was critical too. I think as a woman, that is also an important aspect, that you have women mentors to talk you through different parts of life. So I had mentors who helped me guide when I was having children, and it was really stressful saying, how am I going to manage both? And at that point, I wanted a woman mentor. And I had two who guided me through it and could see when I was failing or falling through and helped me get through it together. So for women, scale is also a function of saying, what can I manage while managing school schedules? Or my parents' health routine? Or my husband's work travel? Because if both are traveling, then how do you manage? So scale there becomes a challenge. And I've had some great mentors who are now helping me understand how to scale up, what to look for in the next growth phase, guide me where I am. So you need to build uh, your support group and your mentor group to make sure that you're getting pushed to the next level. Now Sakshi is trying to provide that same support and mentorship to others. You know, it's very great to have women CEOs talk about it, saying they have support. But an average mid-level woman in business or an entrepreneur can't afford that support. Uh, how do you answer those questions? And even as an entrepreneur and a woman, and we are a 70% women employee company, uh, and we're very proud of it. But sometimes even I struggle saying, how do I give them that balance? How do I make sure that the environment, the model can cater to all those needs? Nobody's talking about it. Uh, Nobody is saying that childcare is expensive. Nobody is saying that daycares don't exist, after, especially after COVID. I mean, I came back and half the creches had shut down. And the ones that are open are open nine to five. So that means that I will drop my baby at nine and leave each office at 10 and better be there at four to pick up my kid. And the minute there's anything wrong, they, sh they go on holiday before us. School calendars are not synced to corporate calendars. So how is that supposed to, you know, sort of work or make it happen? Uh, so those discussions are not happening. And unless you get governments to work with corporates, this is not going to change. You need an overall societal change. It's not just the husband, right? The government has to step in with benefits. The government has to say, I'm going to be part of it. And then corporates have to support that. While some problems require large-scale solutions, for others, the answer lies within you. But that doesn't mean it's easy. One thing I'm still working on is you have to be kind to yourself as a woman, which is what we don't do. You know, there's always guilt that I missed something for the team. I missed something in the office. There's guilt that I missed something at home. It's always that constant struggle. And in that, you forget yourself, right? So then you tell yourself that uh, everyone keeps saying, be kind to yourself. But nobody tells you how. And everyone who talks about it gives very superficial advice to you. So it was amazing for me that one of the uh, women who mentored me had two kids. 
and she talked about the fact that it's hard it's sometimes very difficult to leave a sick child with even a family member and say i need to go out or miss certain things uh, you have to pick those calls and i would miss a lot of school events and that's okay it was a huge battle consciously it was an internal battle i think for a woman the battles always in your head saying what are you going to do and i had to tell myself that no matter how active i was here was something that was changing physically emotionally responsibility wise so i know i told myself that i said if i can have this baby and get this baby to 6 months and keep the business status quo i will give myself an a rating and i had to do this twice <laughs> So I realized that that you know there are times when I could have pushed more or grown the business more. But it's a very conscious decision, saying focus on one thing at a time and then come back to the next. So now, when my younger one is three and a half, I'm telling myself I have to grow. <laughs> This is my time now. I'm ready. You may be faced with difficult decisions on a daily basis. balancing your growing family with your growing business. As we learn from Sakshi, it helps to develop a system of friends and family who can support you. Find mentors who know what you're going through and be kind to yourself. Understand that things may move more slowly now that you have other priorities. Someday you may be ready to mentor others or to take on new challenges, but for now, just take it one step at a time and you will come out on the other side. as a leader i think i'm in a much more comfortable confident spot than i where i was years ago it's been 10 years now so i proved my metal as a business head so i was able to transition the company through covid get everyone together and not just survive but we did very well in covid and part of that was the network support and the tools that we already had i'm in a much better place i think i'm i think i'll be okay leading everyone <laughs> I'd like to thank Sakshi Kapahi for sharing her story. We'll be back next time with another short take as we prepare to launch season 4. This has been Grit and Growth from the Stanford Graduate School of Business. I'm your host, Darius Teeter. If you like this episode, follow us and leave a review on your favorite podcast app. Erica Amawake Ajay and Vian Virgin researched and developed content for this episode. Kendra Gladich is our production coordinator and our executive producer is Tiffany Steves. With writing and production from Andrew Ganim and sound design and mixing by Alex Bennett at Lower Street Media. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back soon with another episode.